Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. It's your first time here. And this is good to see you. I hope you'll stick around. Okay, well in our next video today, we're, we're going to look at uh, another bit of basic tech work. I've been doing a few videos about batteries and charging and uh, starting some basics on the electrical system on your replica. And you might have noticed if you've been watching my previous videos, if you haven't, take a look back at those videos, maybe subscribe to the channel, you'll be able to keep up with, with what we're looking at, I'm going to be doing a new video every Sunday. Um, in those previous videos I mentioned that all of my replicas run on a, a Dean's connector, because I prefer to run Dean's connectors, uh, all my batteries run on Dean's connectors now. So, you know, what do we mean by Dean's connector? Well, this is a, a Mini Tamiya connector which you'll be familiar with most replicas will come with one of those attached now what I tend to change out for is a Dean's connector this is a Dean's connector they're much smaller lengthwise you know comparatively uh, but the main reason for changing to Dean's is they give a, a much better electrical contact there's a much bigger surface area on the on the contacts the plug fastens nice and securely so there's no chance of it becoming loose or coming undone um, over the years I, I've encountered issues with these Mini Tamiya connectors um, you know you, you could go for many years and have no problems at all but I have had issues where, where these have created strange faults it looks like it's connected it looks like there's good continuity in the circuit but uh, you know when you remove the connector that solves all your problems so for, for a first port of call with me when I'm upgrading any of my replicas, I will change out to a Dean's connector. So before we go into the, the Dean's connectors in a, in a bit more detail, I, I better show you the difference between them. This is a male Dean's connector, and this is a female Dean's connector. And what we mean by that is that this end is what connects into this end if I get it the right way around like so so you push them together now whenever you're going to be doing a Dean's conversion always put the male connector which is the bit that plugs in onto your replica and always put the female Dean's connector onto your battery now in this video I'm not going to be applying Dean's to a battery as all my batteries have already got Dean's connectors. The principles are the same, but the only difference is, is if you're putting a Dean's on a battery, take a bit more care, because you don't want to damage your battery. Obviously with regards to heat and moving your solder and iron, uh, iron around and not damaging the battery by bashing it or puncturing it or anything like that. Uh, but also, only cut one wire at a time. Now, what I mean by that is the, the replica we're going to be working on today, this is a, a G and G. This is one of my friend Magpie Tactical. Um, this is one of his, his replicas. Uh, he does some good paint work and some nice photos of his replicas. He's an active airsoft player, maybe check him out on Instagram under Magpie Tactical. Um, but he wanted this converting to Dean's. Now as you can see I've already removed the Mini Tamiya connector. Um, so that we can we can start doing our our Dean's conversion. Now, when you take these off, you either have the option of pushing the pins out, which is quite difficult, or you can just cut the wires as I have here and then strip back. But we'll get that into that in a second. So that's why I'm saying if you're doing your battery, don't cut both wires at the same time like that. Just do one at a time because. You do not want to short your battery out. That's a surefire way of causing a fire. So whenever you're doing Dean's conversion on a battery, just solder one terminal at a time, leave the other one insulated. And that's another reason why we only ever put the female Dean's connector on the battery side and the male Dean's connector on the replica side. Because with the female connector, there's far less risk of it shorting out. Whereas with this, you've got two exposed electrical terminals that could short out and you don't want that on your battery. So we always put the male connector on the replica. So that's the one we're going to be working with today. Now you do find lots of different Dean's connectors online. I like the Amas ones, which is what these ones are. They come with a little cowl to neaten them up when you're finished. 
and they're a really good quality Dean's connector. Uh, I've been using them for a while. I mean, any Dean's connector is fine. They're not very expensive. Um, I think you get about five pairs of these for about five British pounds. I'll put a link in the description as always as to where you can get the Dean's connectors. Uh, so let's have a look what we're going to need. Obviously you need your replica that you're going to be working on. So this one's all prepped and ready to go. We'll move that out of the way. And we'll have a look at what we're going to need. So what you need first of all, is obviously we're going to be putting a male Dean's connector on there. So you need a Dean's connector. You're going to need some tools. You need a soldering iron. Now soldering irons can go very cheap or very expensive. Uh, this isn't a very expensive soldering iron and I'll open with this before we even start doing it that I'm not the best at soldering in the world. That's not my particular field of expertise. But it's a very simple solder job what we're going to be doing on this today. So a soldering iron, you can get very expensive soldering irons, you can get very cheap soldering irons. What you'll find is, is that the better quality your soldering iron, the better quality solder joint you're going to get basically. Less chance of dry joints and things like that. Dry joints just means it's brittle, it could break apart and it's not normally as electrical conductive. Um, but you know, for an halfway decent solder joint and a Dean's connector, this soldering iron has, has served me fine. So again, soldering irons can range anywhere from £10 up to hundreds of pounds. It just depends what type of soldering iron you, you want to get and how much you want to spend on it, how far you want to go. Uh, the better soldering irons do make some jobs a bit easier though. So you need a soldering iron. Now, you don't necessarily need these, but you need one or the other. So these are snips. These are for cutting cable. I strongly recommend a set of these, makes it very easy to snip cables off, um, or wires should I say. You can also strip insulation off the wires back with these, it's not the easiest thing to do accurately, you just grip lightly on the insulation and pull and that will remove the insulation. Uh, you might see people doing that, electricians and what have you, but uh, yeah, that's a basic set of snips. Now, what I tend to use for stripping insulation is these are cable strippers. I think these retail for about four or five pounds. If you go to certain stores, I'll put a link in the description if you want a set of these. Uh, these make it much easier for stripping cable back. You can set them to the, the insulation depth that you want to strip, and then you just basically put your cable in, and that's it. It strips it back for you. Uh, they also have a set of cutters down here, so you know you can cut cable with them as well. But you know, for the small wires that we're cutting, you don't get as much accuracy with these because obviously you've got a gap. You're probably still worth getting a set of snips if you want to be able to get in and cut really close to your connector. So, something to strip cable and cut cable back. You'll need a set of those. Uh, a set of grips. Uh, some people will use helping hands so they can hold the piece that they're soldering on. Now that, that does generally work a lot better. Uh, helping hands are available for, for most online and local DIY places or retailers. Um, they vary in price. Again, I can put a link to those in the description. I won't be using my helping hands today because unfortunately they got damaged. Uh, so I will be using a set of pliers. But normally, as you can see, you, you can use pliers because you want to be able to hold the piece. Obviously, when we're dealing with solder, everything gets very hot. You don't want to burn your hands, so you want safety first on that. So something to hold the piece you're working on. So a set of pliers or a set of helping hands will come in handy for that. And obviously, very importantly, you'll need some solder. You get some solder with some flux, um, and then it makes it much easier. It's then basically in the solder. You just get a set of solder like this with flux, and it'll enable you to do a joint much easier, and that's all you need. Uh, good quality solder. Again, it's not, uh, it's not massively expensive. You can find solder in most electrical or micro centers uh, that, that kind of thing diy any any kind of uh, hardware retailer should have solder in stock for you uh, try to get the solder for, for electrical solder you can get plumber's solder as well which well enough will possibly work but it's much quicker it's not going to be as easy so get electrical solder make sure it is electrical solder and then last but not least you need some heat shrink Heat shrink is uh, incredibly affordable. You can get this online, or again, you should be able to get it at any electrical wholesalers or DIY place. 
any hardware store should have a heat shrink. I like to get heat shrink in various sizes because the replicas come with different gauges of wiring. And if you're ever going to be rewiring your replica in the future, um, you know, you, you might put a thicker gauge of wire in. So you might need thicker heat shrinks to deal with it. These heat shrinks I've had to go with because they will fit over the terminals of the Dean's connector. These are basically just to try and isolate the, the connectors from each other. They shouldn't come in contact anyway. Uh, but it's also an extra moisture barrier and just protects your solder joint as well. So heat shrinks are a must. Okay, so before we, we actually get to the, the soldering, what we're we actually going to be doing here, we're going to be doing a replica. So I've already taken the mini Tamiya connector off. Now you've got options on that. If you if you want, you can snip the connector. Um, you can just cut it off and then strip the cable back, or you can remove the connector. They're difficult to remove unless you have the actual tool for doing it. Um, but you know it is doable. You can do it with a small screwdriver. Just pry the uh, clips back that hold it in the Tamiya, and then push them out. But to be honest, I normally just uh, just cut them off. That's that's the easiest way to, to go about it. Now, when we start wiring the Dean's connector in, so I don't have to explain it while while I'm soldering. As you may notice, on the side of the Dean's connector, it has a positive and a negative. I hope you can make that out on camera. So this top terminal here, the flat terminal, as it were, the one that's in the horizontal plane, that is the positive terminal. And on this terminal here. It's vertically standing if you look at it straight on. That one is your negative terminal. Now remember we always say with these replicas you do not want to get reverse polarity. Now in most replicas as on this you'll have a black and a red wire. The black wire is your negative, your red wire is your positive. So in this case we will be soldering the horizontal positive terminal onto the positive and the vertical terminal onto the negative and then if you continue that obviously with your batteries you're not going to go reverse polarity these Amastine's connectors have positive and negative written on so you, you can't really go wrong you put your positive your positive negative your negative do the same on your battery with the female connector as we looked at earlier as you can see it's got positive negative on the female connector so as long as you follow the key on the side of the Dean's connector you're never going to get reverse polarity. Just make sure that you solder your red positive lead onto the positive, your black negative lead onto the negative. Okay, so that's the connectors looked at. Let's see what we do for a bit of prep work. So we've got insulation on this, this wiring. That's been put on there for, for neatness so that it stays nice and together and neat. Um, I'm going to take that off so that I've got a little bit more space to work with with the wire. Get out them a little bit easier while I strip them. Now I'm going to strip these with my cable strippers. We don't want too much of the insulation removed. Uh, we need enough so we've got a good solder joint. Um, so what we do is we put these into the, the strippers and the level that we want to expose insulation. E we have an exposed conductor as we call it which is your inner wire in there that's the bit that carries the electricity so that's now exposed we should be able to solder that onto our terminal for the deans now because this isn't a battery it doesn't matter if it exposed both terminals we short this out there's no power supply to it it's not going to matter um, so that's that one exposed we do the same with the other side once you've exposed it sometimes you'll find that with multi-strand wire it'll all splay out so what we have to do is get your fingers on it and twist it so it's nice and neat and together and then that's us uh, ready to start soldering on that connector that's both exposed now that should give us a good basis for soldering okay so so once you've exposed the wiring you can strip a bit more off than that if you like. You might have stripped too much off because you, you, you're going to cover a lot of it with your uh, with your heat shrink. So that's another thing to remember when we start soldering. Do not forget to put your heat shrink on. Now obviously we're going to be 
put an Adin's connector on here. Have the solder on there, probably strip out more insulation than that. So they're gonna be soldered on there. So you, you roughly want enough heat shrink to cover the wire and the terminal. And I like to color code my heat shrinks. Doesn't matter if you don't. Black for a negative, red for positive. You don't have to, uh, but I tend to. So we've got a bit of black there. Take our snips. We don't need that much. We'll probably get away with that amount. So we'll trim that back. And as you can see, that'll cover a bit of the wire and the terminal. Remember, it will shrink down some when you heat it up. We'll cut the red one to the same length, just for continuity. Roughly, again, you don't have to be smack on accurate with this just as long as it's going to cover the wire around the terminal create a bit of a moisture barrier okay so we've got our two bits of each rink we've got a Dean's connector with these are mass ones you have to remember to slide this on as well because that will go over there and give it a nice neat finish and we've got a solder now we have to heat up the soldering iron and we'll start soldering so I shall come back to you shortly and we'll uh, We'll be at the uh, workbench, do a bit of soldering, and finish up from there. Okay, so here we are ready to start doing our soldering. First thing when you're doing any soldering is make sure your soldering iron's nice and hot. And then give it a tin up with a little bit of solder. So that we've got a bit of solder on there, we know it's hot. Now the first thing we're going to do, before we start putting any of these terminals onto these wires, is we're going to do what we call tinning. So we're going to tin up the wires. So what that means is, is we're going to apply solder to the inner wiring core of each wire and we're also going to apply solder to each of these terminals. Remember to solder on this side, not on that side, that's the side we're plugging in. Okay, so i got my glamorous assistant here to hold the wires for me, my helping hands isn't working. So basically all we're going to do Let's put the soldering iron up against the wire and run some solder down it. Get it nice and covered. Sometimes you have to wait a while for the heat to go through go so that's one tinned up I will tin the negative lead now and then I'll come back to you Right, okay guys, so that's, uh, that's both wires tinned up now, so they've both got a good amount of solder on them. The, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tin the terminals. So obviously before you do that, decide which side you're going to be putting the, termin the uh, terminal on with the wire. Negative, positive as we discussed earlier, so I'll flip that over. So I think we're going to solder a positive lead onto the top of there. I'm going to solder the negative lead inside there. So we want to tin it on the top and on the top there. So what we'll do is, we'll first of all, we'll tin the negative terminal. And I'll show you how we do that. So again, my glamorous assistant is going to hold the connector for me. Get a bit more solder. Okay, so for this, we're going to have to put quite a bit of heat into the connector. We want to put our soldering iron underneath the connector, get the heat into it, and then melt the solder on top, just like that. And that's that tinned. That's now ready to receive the wire. We'll do the same on the other one, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, so that is now both of these, what we call tinned up and ready to receive the wires. They've got solder on them, good amount of solder, and a good amount of solder on the wires. 
so they're ready to go now as you remember earlier what you absolutely don't want to forget before you just rush in and start soldering these on is you want to put your length of heat shrink on each wire because once this is soldered on you'd have to desolder it if you wanted to put these on afterwards so a length of heat shrink on each one and while I mention it one tool that I did forget to mention you might need is a lighter the easiest way I've found to shrink these heat shrinks down is just with a, a cheap lighter you can use the back of the soldering iron tends to melt them you can use a heat gun if you'd like um, but not very accurate just a quick with the lighter and that tends to do it but we'll show you that in a bit now another thing to remember with the mass connectors is they have this very nice cowling that goes over the bottom of the connector makes it look really neat when you're finished but obviously you need to put that on before you solder on your, your connector otherwise you're going to be having a bad time and have to unsolder it all and, and start again so that's us heat shrinks on your cowling's on we're all ready to go so I think what we'll do is we'll first of all solder on the negative connector so I'll flip these wires over so we can see what we're doing now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my assistant to hold this connector in place in the pliers because remember the connector can get very hot when you're soldering it on and again don't put too much pressure onto the terminal because you don't want to damage it and then all you simply do is you take your wire that you're soldering on place it in the spot where you want to solder it and then push it down let it take hold and then that's you now obviously if you have a set of helping hands you can do this on your own and have the helping hands take the place of my glamorous assistant who's holding the pliers for me but as you can see that's now solid give it a good tug test make sure it's not going to pull off you want it solid you don't want it breaking and then we're basically going to do the exact same thing with the positive terminal all you need to remember is is you've already tinned them so they already have solder on them so just push them together with a solder iron to melt the solder together lift off while holding the wire in place a couple of seconds that solder is going to go off and it should be a solid joint and you've got a good electrical connection so i'll do the other one just now and then uh, we'll come back to you and we'll put our heat shrinks on okay okay guys so now I've basically got both solder joints done so the wires are soldered positive positive negative to negative I keep going on about that but I can't stress enough don't get them the wrong way around because then you're going to have a bad day if you buy a battery that's pre deans and that comes with them the right way around you're going to go negative polarity and that could damage your replica so you don't want to do that so what I've done is there is I've slid the two heat shrinks up and over the terminals and I've got my lighter and all we basically need to do is just a quick shake around with the lighter don't worry about if they go a bit black that's just off the flame off the gas and once they're nicely shrunk down you can see we've now got nice neat shrinked relatively watertight connection obviously none of these connections are, are completely watertight you won't want to submerge your replica and then all you have to do after that is uh, slide up your mass connector which depending on the Dean's connectors you buy you might not have one of these cowls on some of them don't come with them it doesn't matter if it doesn't um, that's not going to cause you a problem if it doesn't have these I just like these ones because they look neat 
So there you go. That is that replica ready to accept a Dean's battery. The next thing that we want to do is check that the replica works. So I'll go and get a battery and I'll come back to you. Okay guys, well I thought I might as well give it a try with the Titan as a test because we did this in our previous video. I hope Magpie Tactical doesn't mind me uh, running a Olivia Mayon battery through his replica, but uh, we'll see. Well, I'd say that's a success, guys. So that is that replica now accepting Dean's. Now, remember what I was saying that some of them don't always come with the cowl. That is a Dean's connector that's been attached by a Titan, not by me. Um, so as you can see, it's just heat shrink. Um, I just like the Amass ones. I think they they look really neat when they're done. You know, they, they look nice. So remember, guys, if you're doing a battery, it's exactly the same process of what we've done there. The only difference is, remember to use a female Dean's connector, always have male on the replica to avoid shorts. The female connector is just the same, you'll still have your negative on the upright vertical connector and you'll have positive on the horizontal connector, because obviously they have to match you up. Um, but when you're doing it, if I was doing this battery for example, I would cut this wire off the Tamiya and then I would solder that and heat shrink it to my Dean's connector. Then I would cut that wire off and solder and connect that to my Dean's connector. You don't want any risk of these two wires coming into contact e with each other with burr conductors because that's going to short your battery out. There is a good chance your battery will set fire, possibly explode if, if, if you go down that route. So that's the only difference between soldering what we've done today and doing your batteries. But the easiest option is just to buy your batteries with Deans on them already and have Deans on all your replicas. Okay, so I hope uh, that video has been helpful. I hope you found it useful. I hope you could follow along with that. If you have any further comments, suggestions or questions about Deans in up your replicas and your batteries, then drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Uh, you can also go on the Facebook page and uh, put any comments on there I'll always reply uh, but other than that if you're enjoying my series of videos if you if you're finding that they, they're teaching you something or finding them useful then don't forget to subscribe and I'll be putting a new video out every Sunday but for now I'll get this replica back to Magpie Tactical and he can enjoy it with his Deans okay see you next time